Hey, so today I just want to make a quick video about how you can bring in custom synth patches into Virtuoso. So if you just want to skip straight to that bit, I'll put some chapter links in the comments and then you can just click through to the bit that you want to know. So I wanted to do a bit of an introduction for those of you who maybe don't know what I mean when I say patches or synthesizer. Um, you know, I appreciate that for some people getting into Virtuoso, they might not have any history with a DAW or using a synth or, you know, even playing an instrument. So some of this stuff's like super obvious to some people and to others it's really new. So at the time of making this video, every sound source in Virtuoso, apart from the microphone and the M pads, which does the drum noises, um, they're all using a synthesizer called Helm in the background. And you can download this synth uh, as a standalone thing. You can run it as a VST. It works on Mac, PC, and Linux, I think. And if you want to pay for it, you can send Matt Titel some money for his work. He also makes a really good other synthesizer called Vital, which is much newer and it has a lot more features. But Helm's still really good. You can still do a lot with it. And if you're new to synthesis, it's probably quite a good place to start. So there are some great sounds in Virtuoso already, but there's currently no way to kind of shape those sounds beyond the initial settings that you might have set in a custom patch or the patch that's already been made. Um, you know, if you open up the effects panel in Virtuoso, it gives you a few options there. And one of those is the arpeggiator. So if you turn that on, there is a length setting. And a good example of this, which I will show you, if you're using like a kick drum sound that you've made in the Helm synth, then what you can do with the length setting is if say, for example, you might put the um, arpeggiator on a quarter note and then when you hold that note it's just going to do like a steady 4-4 four, four kick drum so if you then play with the length you can kind of play around as if you've got access to the release but I think what that setting is actually doing it changes the gate setting inside the arpeggiator and helm and what it seems to do is if you put it all the way down it kind of skips the decay part of the envelope so it almost like feels like you're getting a shorter sound but it's not really the release so just have a play around with that in helm and you'll see what i mean um the other things you can obviously do inside virtuoso is with your left hand you can change the filter cutoff which can kind of give you this it, it's not quite like volume it's actually changing the filter that you have active in the synth so if you don't have a filter that's active in the helm patch you won't get anything on that left hand so if you've got like a low pass filter which is probably the most common type of filter used on a bass sound um, if you take your hand all the way to the left it's going to deaden the sound right down you'll get rid of a lot of the highs and then you can bring it up and it opens up the filter like that so you know you can't change the filter type once you're in virtuoso but when you're in helm you can um, and then the only other thing you can do is reverb and delay which again is built into helm if you turn those off in helm and then you bring up the patch in virtuoso so when you change that echo box it's going to do nothing so that's just something that you want to consider what i normally do is i turn on reverb all the time but then bring the mix right down and then it's up to you inside the app if you want to bring that mix up so that's just a good little tip for getting some effects control in virtuoso so you know, I'm not going to go into a full synthesis tutorial right now because there's about a million and one really good synthesis tutorials online. There's written ones, there's ones on Reddit, there's ones on YouTube, there's books, there's so much stuff. There's like hundreds of years, well, maybe not hundreds, but at least 50 years worth of synthesis tutorials out there. So just go and have a look and have a read and best of all, just experiment, you know, just play with it because that's the best way to learn, I think, sometimes. So let's um, jump into the headset and we'll do something. All right, so I'm going to jump into the headset now and I'm using the PC version connected with the cable. It makes doing stuff like this way easier, but you can definitely do this on the Quest version as well. It just means that you've got to kind of reconnect your headset each time to side quest to kind of get the save folder in, but I'll show you in a second. So the first thing you need to do is open up Virtuoso and just create a save file. So let's do that now. So if I come into the headset, I've actually deleted all my save files. I've backed them up somewhere else and I've got a nice clean kind of palette here. So all I need to do is make, I don't need to make any instruments, just go save as. And then we can name this if we like to be organized. So let's call it patches um, like this. You just type that in. You can also type like this and then enter. There you go, patches, save as. And when I do this, what will happen is it will make a zip folder in the folder outside the app. So I actually don't need to be in Virtuoso at this point. So I'm just gonna come out of my headset and I'm gonna close the app. So if we close the app like this, and then we come here. So look, as I said, we've got a save folder there. So basically this save folder, if we unzip this, and it's fine to do this, unzip it, extract all, um, I'll just click that like that, and it'll take a little moment, and then boom, there's our file. So in here we've got some sort of save notepads, which I think hold some of the settings for various things, like you know the, the default settings if you wanna change those, but it's probably best not to. And then in here actually, look, this is the board patch one. So this is the first patch. 
And I'm actually just going to turn my headphones down because it's really loud. But yeah, that's uh, the first patch. And if you actually open this as a text file, you can see all the nitty gritty in here. And basically this one is Lush Lead. So that is your first board patch. So that's all you need to do to get into the patches. Now, if you want to overwrite a patch, and I'm going to show you now with like a kick drum or something. I think I made this a while back. So if we go to like, for instance, this patch here. So if I click on that, done, what it should do, you hear now this, this sort of kick drum thing. It's obviously like a very long release kick drum. And we can change some of the settings in here if we want, but I'm not gonna do that now. Let's just, let's just export this straight away. So the best thing to do here is just to be sure you're in the right place is when you're up here, oh no, I've messed that right up. <laughs> I think it's fine. I don't know what I just did. Oh, I just made a shortcut down there, it's fine. So look, so copy that shortcut from up here, like that, copy that, come to Helm, and then type that in there. I think we might have already been in the right place, to be honest. And then all I'm gonna do is select board patch one, and I'm gonna export over that. So if I save that now, it's gonna tell me that it already exists, but I'm just gonna click yes, because I don't care. When I come back into this now, it's, it's named it board patch one, so I don't need to do any of that. Um, and now I've got this kick drum. And then, well, yeah, so what I've done there is I've overwritten that first patch. And you might think, well, oh, but now I've lost my lead noise. Well, you'd think that, but actually if you come back out into your Virtuoso folder, so I'll delete the old zip file because I don't need that one anymore. So I'm gonna delete that. Always be careful when you're deleting stuff, just back everything up. If you're not sure what's gonna happen, just back that folder up in a different folder. Just make a folder on your desktop or on your documents or something and stick stuff in there. Because if you've spent a long time building up patches or a song and then you delete it by accident, there's probably no way of getting it back. So just be careful with that. So this is the save file that I've changed. And obviously it's not zipped at the moment, but don't zip it. Because if you zip it, you'll bugger it up basically. So just, <laughs> Come back to Steam, start the app again. So bring back Virtuoso, it's gonna do its little thing. So once you get back into the apps, you're gonna bring up your menu again, you're gonna to go to Song Library, and what I just did before and it didn't work is I still had Helm open and it didn't let me load this. So just be careful, if it's not letting you load your file, you might have something like Helm open. Just just, just close it basically, because if, if you've got something running in the background, it might stop it loading. But you can see now that's loaded okay. So now if I bring up my menu again and I go to the board, because that's where I saved my patch, what should happen now is you can see now, as well as these original ones, I have board patch one, and that is, it's that kick drum thing. Well, I've made that polyphonic, which is probably not what I want, so maybe that's something I can edit later, but you can see that the patch is loaded. So that's what we wanted, right? So you might be saying, well, that's not a very good name for a patch. So then what you want to do, if you're not happy with the name is, you'd need to quit Virtuoso again and go in and edit a text file. Okay, so there's one other really important point to make here, and that's once you've loaded up your patches folder and you're happy that you've got the sound, what you should do at this point is just save it again within the app. And basically, you need to do this because if you don't do this, it won't create the original patches again. And let me show you what I mean by that. All right, so after you've saved the file again inside Virtuoso, you're just gonna come back out into your saves folder, extract that save zip. It's gonna do its thing again. Um, again, you could back this up if you want it, but I'm just gonna delete this zip because I don't really need it anymore. I'll then open this save file, go back into the patches, um, and then what you've got in here is, if you open board patch one, you should see that this one is called, so I already named this actually before because I messed this up. So. Basically in here, it would normally say board patch one, but I've called that one kick long release just because I'm gonna name all my patches with a number at the start, just so I can remember. So that's that kick sound that I added. And then actually what you'll see now is that if you open up board patch 16, it's made that one. There's, I've now got an extra patch. And all that is, is the original patch that I overwrote. So that is lush lead. And that's the sound that's a default virtuoso sound. So that one is also here, look. So now we've actually created an extra space for a preset. And that's what's cool about this. You can keep building them up um, and you can kind of go as far as you want with it. The only thing I will say, and there's a guy called Simon Goodwin on YouTube. He's called Faith uh, Symes on, on, on Discord. You'll see him about it. He makes a lot of cool stuff. He suggested that if you go too far with this, 
um, somewhere around 60 to 100 patches he tried I think and he started getting to an area that when he cycled through patches he was getting these mental noises that could be really really loud in the headset so just be really careful whenever you're modding stuff like this especially with sound stuff just be really careful and just keep your volume down because it's it's really important like you might think it's not a big deal but when you get to my age you start getting things like tinnitus tinnitus and it, it's nasty so just be really careful keep your volume down you can always turn it up later but you know you only get one chance for that horrible noise to hit you and it's really bad so so that's done there what i will do now quickly is i'll just show you quickly like how to make another sound so uh, it's the same principle so what we'll do is we'll grab uh, something that we like in here so there's loads of already built-in stuff into helm i think i've downloaded some packs and stuff here as well so i think this one's made by chris owl alvarez and it sounds a bit like this and it's kind of pretty retro sounding synth but i quite like that so I you know, it's quite cheesy, but we'll go with it. So export this, and then again, what I'll do is just make sure I'm in the right folder. I think I probably already was, but just, just grab that and then put the shortcut into here like this. Just make sure that I'm in the right place. And then I'm gonna overwrite the cluster, save it, let, you know, let it do its thing, replace it. And then all I need to do is, I don't actually need to change anything there now. All I need to do is start up Virtuoso again. So I'll do that now. Okay, so hopefully this is the last thing I need to show you. Um, but if we come back into the headset, it's going to be exactly the same as before. We'll just bring up the menu, go to Song Library, um, and it will have re-zipped the file for us. So we're just going to load that back up. That's the main thing you've got to remember is never re-zip the file. You can unzip it, but don't zip it yourself. Because when you do that, I don't think it works, or at least it didn't when I did it. So what will happen now is it's actually saved because I had that board open from last time. But you can see now it's actually got a proper name. So. I've got old organ jammy, which are original default ones, but I've also now got one kick long release, which is this sound that I made before. And it's still not all right because I don't want a polyphonic kick. But so if I close that, what should have happened now, and hopefully it will, if I make this cluster, the same thing should have happened here as the other one. So if you go through, there's the default ones, and now I've got this cluster patch one, which is now that preset that I just showed you. So. You know, so there it is. That's all you got to do. And you can go as far with this as you want to, I suppose. Spend hours on it or don't do it at all. You know, just give it a go. It's worth a go, I think. So, yeah, nice one. Oh. There's one thing I almost forgot. Do you have another minute? All right, so I was going to end the video there, but I thought I might just do a quick run through of the actual Helm synthesizer and how, you know, changing certain settings in there affects the sound in Virtuoso and what you can and can't do, I suppose. So I'm going to open up one of the existing patches and it's one of my favorites and it's a uh, one pit. So it's actually just called board patch seven, but if you open up the notepad, it's definitely one pit. So, so you can, you maybe recognize that sound. Um, so the first thing I'll show you, I think I might have already mentioned it, but at the top here, there's a volume slider. So you can use this if you're just monitoring the sound, but also this will affect how the sound will come across in Virtuoso. So if you literally turn this to the bottom and then you save this patch, when you open up Virtuoso, you won't be able to hear anything. And that, that's just how it is. I would love some for them so much. I would love it if they could just give us access to this volume slider in the game, because it would just make it so much easier for balancing patches. And also you could like monitor things quieter and all sorts. So yeah, hopefully they'll do that soon. Um, if you remember in the effects panel, so these are like the main effects that you get in Virtuoso. There's one called feedback. And at the moment, there's no amount of this, but if you turn that up like that, it, it adds it in basically, it's a bit like a dry wet really, but it adds this in and you can't change, as far as I'm aware, you can't change the tune and you can't change the transpose within Virtuoso. So you kind of need to set, what I normally do is set the amount to zero like this and then find a transpose and a tune that I like. I mean, I think I liked it there mostly. You know, find a place that works and then you can play with the amount once you're in the app, basically. So that's just kind of going to give you, it's kind of a distortion feedback sort of ring mod sort of thing, I think. But uh, it gives you some nice control anyway. So then you've got this stutter effect. And I don't think there's any way of adding this once you're in Virtuoso. So if you want to put this on, you kind of need to put it on now. And, and that can add all sorts of weird sounds. But like the problem with this effect is like, 
Now that noise is not particularly usable on its own, like it's quite a good effect, but there's not, you're not gonna use it as a melody, are you? But it'd be quite nice if you could bring that in when you're in Virtuoso. So again, if we could have that control in the app, that would be really useful. But you can do some kind of nice sort of stuff with this. You know, you can give this kind of nice sort of stutter effects and, and with the softness, you can make it a bit smoother. So it's not so, um, not so intense. Uh, but I'll turn that off for now. Then you've got distortion. And again, there's no way of putting this on or off once you're in the app. This adds a lot of volume to it, I've noticed. So if you, if you add that drive all the way up and you have the mix all the way up, see how much different that is volume wise. So if you, if you make a, a patch with lots of distortion, you might want to bring the volume down a little bit just to kind of match. And I, and I normally go for like basically where that is, where that line is. I'm normally aiming for just below that. I don't think you want to go too much over because then you start getting into the red and it doesn't sound that nice and it'll just be way too loud in the app. Um, then you've obviously got delay. Delay works as you'd expect. So if I turn the feedback up and I change the frequency. So I think I might be a little bit wrong, but I think in Virtuoso you can affect the mix. So it's called, I'll turn the reverb off. When you go to the effects panel, there's a thing called echo and that box controls the reverb and the delay. So if you don't want any reverb or delay option, you don't want to have any control, just turn them both off and then you'll have a nice dry sound like that. But if you actually think, well, I would want to have some reverb, but I don't want it all the time, you can just save your patch with no mix. So just put your mix all the way down. And then in the app, when you're in the app, you can bring up that box, you know, the ball in the box, and you can add in that reverb later. Uh, but if you don't have the reverb unit on, so if I turn that off and save it, then you just cannot access the reverb. So I think it's best to keep it on, but just keep the mix down and then you can choose to have it if you want. But then it's the same for the delay, but the delay works slightly different. So I think the delay, you can change the mix, but you can also change, I think, you can change the frequency. Uh, because sometimes when you're playing with the uh, delay in Virtuoso, I've noticed that you get that kind of effect. You get that kind of like stuttery effect. Turn the feedback down probably because you don't want it all the way unless you want to go mental. Because you get a lot of distortion if you, if you have it all the way. So just be careful, I guess. But it's, it, again, it's fun to play with. But yeah, so if you definitely know you don't want delay, you can just turn it off there or you can just keep the mix down. So they're kind of the things that you can affect. Oh, actually you can do the arpeggiator, can't you as well? So if you do the arpeggiator and then you've got that running and then you turn the gate up, you see how the notes go on for a little bit longer? And if you take it down, they're really short. So if I actually put this onto a really slow gate now, you see what happens there. But if I take the gate down, it's really quick. So it jumps over that decay really quick. But if you have it up, then it moves through most of the envelope. So you can change that gate amount in Virtuoso, but they've called it length rather than gate. Uh, and you can obviously change the frequency as well. And I think you can change all of this stuff actually, including the octaves. Uh, yeah, and whatever you have the ARP set on in the patch, it will be saved as that in the um, in, in Virtuoso as well. So, I mean, other than that, I'm not gonna go into a full synthesis tutorial here, but there's a few things you can add in. You can add in a bit of noise, um, which you can't hear that well because this is the filter here. So this, this bottom slider does the cutoff. So because this is a um, low pass filter, so when you've got your filter like this, it's a low pass filter. It's only allowing sound in below that cutoff point. Um, if you bring that up, it will open all the way up. If you bring it all the way down, you almost can't hear it. And then this side is the resonance, which is kind of the peak point at where that cutoff is. So it can be a good tool for making nice sounds, but it can also make some sounds that you don't really want. See how you get those really resonant frequencies sometimes? And they can be good, but they can also be really bad, especially when they go into the red like that. It's not good. And unfortunately, there's no control over that once you get into um, Virtuoso. So you've always got to make sure your sound it's kind of at a point where it's playable because if it's not, then there's not a lot you can do about it. Uh, you can change the amount of decibels in the filter there as well. Um, and actually, I don't know. Um, yeah, you can, I suppose you could change that as well. Yeah, so there's, there's a different filter type there. So you can do like a shelf, um, which will just kind of take out some, you know, either t take out some of the highs or it'll take out some of the lows. Or you can do this kind of band pass as well. 
so you can get creative with this, but unfortunately in Helm there's only one filter type. It's not like um, Serum where you can have multiple or Vital where you can have just crazy amounts of filters. Um, so, you know, it's a bit limited, but sometimes being limited is good, especially if you're learning something for new, you know, new use. Uh, I guess the only other things that you can do in here, I mean, there's, there's a few other things that I probably won't go into, but yeah, you can change the, the amplitude em envelope here. So if I put this release all the way up, now I'm just hitting that note just, just once. I'm not holding it and it will play. It plays right through for ages. Um, and equally with the decay as well. You see how the decay, if I hold the note, so I'll hold the note, I'll let go of the note, and then it jumps to that decay point. But if I hold the note, it's coming all the way down. It's decaying for that whole time. And then once it gets to the end of that decay, and it's taking ages because I put the decay up really far, it's, it's gonna take forever. Now at that point, it's gonna sustain at the point in which I leave it. So if I put the sustain down like that, you'll see how it'll sustain at a much lower level. So it's almost silent, isn't it? So it's decaying for ages and it's just gonna sustain. So there's a lot you can do with that. And you can do the same with the filter envelope as well. So if I put the attack up on the filter envelope, you'll see that actually what happens now is that the filter is gonna rise. And you can hear that on the noise, especially. And then, yeah, you can change your waveforms in here. I'm just going to make that a bit quicker. So you can see that. See that filter sweep? Add a bit of reverb. And if you put the amplitude attack as well, then it will be much quieter as it comes in. And then there's even like a step sequencer. You can add that to stuff. I think the way that you do that is you, let's say, let's do something stupid like this. So that's now step sequencing that. Just changing this mod wheel with a step sequencer. And you can add this to as much stuff as you want. So you could add it to the filter if you wanted like this. And then when you change these, sounds horrible now doesn't it <laughs> how to make a horrible sound in helm yeah so that's it i'm not going to do any more but i just wanted to show you kind of you know what you change in here will affect how it sounds uh, in virtuoso so i think i've said enough i think i've gone on for long enough and if you made it to this point then i really appreciate you watching my videos and you know what you could do to be really nice is you could click the like button at least and then you could subscribe if you wanted or you can just leave a horrible comment like some people do and i love them as well so i love you all equally thanks very much for watching and um, i'll catch you somewhere else some other time bye